Trump. Last week it was someone who used to raise their hands. Let's see the Gemara. Onyas shoisha batito. An onyas has to drink from his own flower pot. Before someone's honest the woman, he better make sure that this is the woman he would marry too. If not, it might mess up his plans. Amali rabbi mi parzakaya l'rabashi. Michli, let's check this out. Michli, migma gemiri gamri me'adodi. We have a reciprocal relationship between onyas and nefata. That's how we know 50 shkolem are paid by both onyas and nefata. So if that's the case, l'hom mil sonami ligma me'adodi. Why don't we learn this halacha as well? That just like a ma'anis is forced to marry her, a mafata should also be forced to marry her. A makra, the pasuk says, "Mor yemarenu loy liisha loy midaitoi," and there's a whole bunch of different shatim in there showing how you see it from here. So for those who learn, it says "Mor yemarenu." All I have to say is "Mor yemarenu liisha." What's the loy? The extra loy teaches you loy midaitoi. But there's a whole bunch of different Rishonim who have different connection and how to learn from here that it's Vidaito. So by Nafata, he has an option of if he wants to marry her or not. And by Oynes, he does not have an option. How bad is this condition that he's still forced to marry her? I don't understand. We, the, the Mishnah says that if this woman is a mamzeris, then he's not mechuyev to marry her. Why not? There's an essay in a loisase. The essay of loisia leisha should be doicha the loisase of loyam from mamzer to kal hashem. Amar li, so this is what he answered. Hey, chamini meisa and say v'lut chiloisase. When do we say that an essay is doicha loisase? That can go in mila b'taras. If there's teras on the air on the orla, and you're not allowed to cut off a, a, a teras normally, but here in order to do gemila, you're cutting off the teras. That's when you say aside the chalisa, the loy efsher lichayuma lasei. It's impossible to be mekayim the asay of mila without also violating the iser of cutting off the teras. Avol hacha in this case where we're mekayim him to marry her, the amra the loy beina if she says. She's not interested. She doesn't want me isa So if she doesn't want, which will encourage her to say, there would be no essay at all. So, in other words, when do you say say the chaloisa? That's when it's impossible to be mekayim bese without violating the loisa, and you can't get around it. But if there's a way <clears throat> to avoid ase where there would be no bitzvah to say, for instance, if she didn't want, then there's no reason to violate the loisa. And Rashi says, <clears throat> Rashi says, Mi yisa la seklal hash to nami melamdin oisa loimer eni roitza. You explain to her that it's best for her to say she doesn't want this ma'anas. And Toysva says even more. Toysva says, even if she wants, because Toysva learns it's a, it's a little bit different than Shaz, because Toysva says over here, what if she said I want him? The Gemara, there, there the Gemara is asking. Say say. and the still even if she says I want him. So there, why don't you say I say Still, a chashem will say, "Why le dami lemila b'tzeras?" It's still not dami to mila b'tzeras, where it's impossible at all to ever do the asay of mila without the tzeras, and they're both there. This is since it's possible that she could say she doesn't want, so the asay is not such an unequivocal asay, and there you won't say asay. Doich aloisus. There are those who learn the reason why the asay is not the aloisus over here is because who is the asay on? The asay is on him. The loisus is on her too. So she can say, because you want to say, I should be over my loisus. No, thank you. So that's another one of the svaris that's offered. Toysus also tells us something very interesting that Mila B'Tzeras is actually not a say because by Tzeras, there's an essay and a together. 
but it, it the, for some reason it became the colloquial example of a Seder Chaloshizah, that it's actually not a good example of a Seder Chaloshizah. Toysus actually says that Seder Chaloshizah, that the Gemara really means is Kalayim B'Titzes, that you're allowed to do Kalayim when you have Titzes, meaning if you have a bag of fish done, you still can have the strands of Tchelas. Okay, let's do the head of the Mishnah Vaita. Yisoyma Shinnis Arsa Vinnis Garsha. And Rashi tells us right away that Nis Arsa Vinnis Garsha is Milsa Achriti, the lawyer Yisoyma. So let's focus on this. Yisoyma, and let's not focus right now on the Nis Arsa Vinnis Garsha. So Yisoyma is a girl whose father can't accept the Knas because he's not alive. Rabbi Lazar Aymer Ha'ayn is Chayib, and I'm a Fatifa. Someone who's Ma'anasar, of course, it's against her will. He's Chayib to pay her. But the father is part because she was a willing participant. Since she's the Baldover, and she's a willing participant, she's not entitled to Knas. If her father would be alive, her father would be entitled to Knas. But her, she is not because she was a willing participant. Omer Rabbi Barbachano, Omer Rabbi Yechani. Rabbi Lazar, Peshit is Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Omer. Rabbi Lazar is surely following the sheet of his Rebbe. Because we learned in the last Mishnah that a woman, even if she's a Naira, if she was Nisarsha and Nisgarsha, from the Pasuk Asher Loya Rosa, we learn that the holding of Knas doesn't apply to her, according to Rabbi Yossi Agui. But according to Rabbi Kiva, we had two Nuskois in Rabbi Kiva. We had our Mishnah that says Rabbi Kiva holds that she gets Knas to Knosa La'atzma, and we had another Rabbi Kiva that says she gets a knas or knas a lavua, lahavia. So Zakti Gemara, Rabbi Lezer here is clearly paskening like his Rebbe, because Rabbi Lezer is saying that there's knas here. If there's knas here, obviously it's not following the sheet of Rabbi Yishai Glili, who holds there's no knas at all for a woman who is in this arsa. In this garsha, rather, <clears throat> rather it's going to call Rabbi Kiva, Tomi Yeshla, knas, or knas a And it must follow Rabbi Kiva in our Mishnah, who says the knas goes to herself, and that's why Hamafata is part Mimai, how do we know this? Midikatani Yisoyma. Since the Tana decided to discuss our Mishnah, not in the standard case of Nisarsim and Nisarsha, but a case where there's a Yisoyma involved, Rabbi Lezor Eimer, Ha'ayin Yisrael, Hamafata Potter. You might ask, Yisoyma Pshita. You might ask if it's a Yisoyma, so it's all about her, it's Poshit. That someone who's mafat to her should be potter. So why did the Mishnah tell us a case of Yisayma? And the Hakamash Malon is to teach us an added lesson. The Naira Shinis Arsa Vinis Garsha, any Naira who was Nisar Shinis Garsha, even though her father is alive, Ki Yisayma, she's just like a woman who lost her father. Ma Yisayma La Atzma, just like a Yisayma, who gets the Knas, she gets it herself. So that explains the mission. Yesoima is one case. is a second case. And the Mishnah is illustrating that by Nisarsevinisgarsha, there is Knas, and the Knas goes to the girl herself, which is exactly the Shita of Rabbi Kiva in our mission. Halacha Karabeliezer. The halacha is like Rabeliezer. Kari Rav Alei, the Rabeliezer, Rav called Rabeliezer, Tuvina de Chachimi. He's the smart, smartest of the Chachamim. And the Rishonim talk about what was so smart about Rabeliezer. So one of the answers that the Rashba gives is because Rabeliezer made, structured the mission in such a way where not only will it show that we pass him like his Rebbe, like Rabbi Kiva, but it also shows that Rabbi Kiva's the Bekiva sheet that Rabbi Lazar is possibly like is that Knosso La'atzma. Okay, Gvaltik. There's actually a Shaila that they bring around from this Gemara and many Gemaras like this. Is it, the Allah is Ha'imra Dover B'Shem Oimrei Mevi Gaula Loyla. So let's say Moti tells me over a beautiful shtickle from the Meshachach. So in order for me to be Mekayim, did you say Moti told me? Or do I have to say Moti told me that he heard from Abeloi, and Abeloi said he heard it from Aboyashiv, and Aboyashiv said he heard it from Abersimkor. 
Do I have to do the whole thing? Right? Do you have to do the whole the whole shtickle? So, so from the Gemara, you see at least there was a hakpada that they not only listed off who the person who immediately reported it to them, rather you have to have the whole yichus brief. Yichus brief. That's why it's better just to forward the email as is, because then you could see all the people that it came from, even where it originated. Which I always find to be the most interesting part of the email. Not who sent it to me, but who, who it went through first. Who else looked at this off-color joke and then passed it on? Okay. Zok the Heilige Mishnevaiter. Ezehu Boishas. What is Boishas? How does how do we assess the value of Boishas? Zok the Mishnah, Hakoi Levi, Hamavayish, Hamispayish. It all depends on who the perpetrator is and who the victim is. And Rashi teaches us some psychology. Let's look at Rashi. Rashi says, Adam Benini Hamavayish. If it's a regular person who's Mavayish you, Bushasai Kasha, it would be more humiliating to you, Me Adam Zoilo, from a homeless guy, Umi Adam Khashu. So if someone very Khashu is Mavazu you, that's not so painful. Why? Unfortunately, saying, because other, uh, people who are very big and mighty, they're used to, uh, they're used to, uh, you know, using people more, asking people for favors, people do things for them. So it's not so demeaning to do something for them. But a regular person who's Mavash is much worse. An Adam Zoyal, someone who's at the bottom of the totem pole, um, for some reason, Rashi learns that when he's Mavash with somebody, that's not either such a big busha. The biggest busha is when it's a jury of your peers. That person is, that's where, that's where the busha is. There's a little bit of a remise to this that we're trying to learn from the story of Dina. Because when the brothers of Dina, the children of Yaakov, uh, attacked Shem, they said, So they were, you, you see that it's not just describing that Dina was Mitmas, but also the stature of who Dina was. She was one of our siblings. She was a daughter of Yaakov Avinu. So you see that's taken into account to justify the punishment that they meted out. So Zok Gemar Pgam, how do you assess Pgam, which is Nesek, how a person becomes worth less? You look at her like she was a Shivcha in the Shuk. How much she's worth, she's worth as a Basula and how much she's worth as a Baula. So I, I don't know when my wife interviews a goita to see how well she cleans the house. My wife doesn't ask her, are you a basula or are you a baula? Because I don't think that has any impact on how well this woman is going to clean her house, which is something that the Gemara is going to discuss. Kanas, that shava b'cholav. That doesn't require any type of assessment. The whole sheyesh kids from minatoya shava b'cholav. Anytime the Torah sets aside a specific payment, so that's something that's not subject to assessment, that's always going to be the same, no matter who the perpetrator or the victim is. The Ema, how do you know that in addition to the Chamisha Sloim of the Knas, there's also the damages paid? The Ema Chamisha Sloim, Amorachmana, Mikol Mili. Maybe the Torah is saying, in the case of Ma'an and Samafata, waive all of the individual fees and we'll have one big fee that will cover for everything. And that's the 50 shkol. How do you know that over and above the 50 shkol of Knas, you also have to pay Nezek, Tsar, and Boishas? On Reb Zera, it's not logical to say that there should be no distinction. Because you they're going to say, Bo Bas Malachim Chamishim. That's simply not fair. It's a boishas. No, there has to be a difference. There's a difference between the level of humiliation. So therefore, Hilchach, you have boishas. It's not misdabber to say that that 50 was a flat rate. Omele Abaye, I don't understand. You find in other places in the Torah where there would also be a difference in situations, yet the Torah just listed a flat rate. And where is that? Yehachi Gabe Eved Nami. The halacha is, if your shor kills someone else's evet, 
We don't assess the value of that particular evidence. And that's how much you have to pay his owner. Rather, the Torah just said you pay 30 shkalim straight. So once again, people can say, an Eved who is a highly skilled person who knows how to deal with precious stones, Shloishim is only worth Shloishim. And the Eved Oisa, Maisa Macha, and an Eved who is just a tailor, which is a much lower level of skill than that of a Neuke Margolios, he's also going to get Shloishim. You don't have such a Kasha. And there the Torah says it's a flat rate. So over here also say it's a flat rate. Ella Amar Abzeira, Abzeira said, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to understand what's the difference between what Abzeira is saying now and what he said a moment ago and why his second Taina should be any more convincing. But let's see what the Taina is. Ella Amar Abzeira, Ilubo Allah Shnaim, if two people were boiled a woman, Echot Kedarka, one was Kedarka, Vechot Shaloi Kedarka. Now, they both pick Nas. The problem is, if someone was bought on a woman Kedarka, she's now a Meula, there is no Din Knas if someone's boiler again. So the Allah Rishonim say that this is out of order. The, the, and once again, the normal way to speak is Kedarka and Shaloi Kedarka. But this is not in chronological order. In fact, the Bia Shaloi Kedarka happened first, where there's a Chi of Knas, but she's still a Basula, and therefore, if someone is boiler Kedarka later, she will once again, be entitled to a second class. So, Yoimru, Baal Shleimah Chamishim, Baal Pugumah Chamishim, is it logical that after the first Bia, she should get Chamishim, when she was untouched completely, and the second person who's violating a woman who is already touched should also be Chamishim? So, once again, Reb Zeyer is making the same argument as he made before. Why is it any better than the first time he made the argument? So let's see Rashi. Hello, Marb Zayra. Mehacha, Mistavra, She'ein Boishis, Bechlal Chamishim. It's Mistavra to say that when the Torah said Chamishim, it's nothing to do with the Boishis, it's a standalone payment of Knas. Tim Cain, because if you're going to say it includes the Boishis, Eich Hefrish, Bein Baal Shlema, Lebaal Paguma, Shenivala Shalai Kedarka. If a woman was already Nivala Shalai Kedarka, she's already a Paguma. The second person who's boiler should surely not have to pay a full knas because she wasn't at the status that she was before. Where do you see a difference? Clearly, there's a difference. So it must be that the boys is just paid separately. But the problem is, did the Gemara not already bring a raya from Evid? The Gemara brought a raya from Evid. Abaye shrugged it up already. Abaye said that by Evid also it varies. So what I saw in the Rishonim is that in the first round, when Rabbi Zera was suggesting that they should be <clears throat> treated separately, that wasn't looking at the actual woman and her condition. It was looking at external things. This woman comes from this background. That woman comes from that background. That's, that's something that Abaya claimed shouldn't make a difference. But now, Rabbi Zera said it's a little bit worse. Now we're talking about the actual woman change. She's a ba'ula at that point. Clearly, even you would agree that a woman who's a ba'ula shouldn't get as much knas as a woman who's not a ba'ula. So Reb is saying here there's a difference in the actual physical difference of the woman. And therefore, even Abaya, you should agree that there should be a different payment. But Abaya came back with a similar raya from Evid. Omale Abaya, so once again, the first retort that Abaya offered was also external things, not the body of the Evid itself, but his skill level. Now Abaya is saying, well, even by an Evid, when there's an actual difference in the Guf Evid, we still have a prescribed Shloishim, and we're not concerned. And we're not concerned with the fact that the value would be different, yet we still accept the Shloishim, the territory of the Shloishim is a flat rate. So maybe Lagabe de Busha, it should also be included in the 50 slime of the class. So we're looking for a Makar. How do we know that in addition to the 50 of the class, there's also the payments of Nezib? So Marbayu Amakra, we had this earlier in the Masechta, the 50 Shkolmar paid the Tachas Asher Ina. So 
the Torah says this payment is specifically earmarked to deal with the torture that you put her through. Hani tachas asherina. These 50 are specifically earmarked and focused on the tachas asherina. Mechalal dikeboshi should become. Vaisakos are other payments as well, because there's more than ino over here. There's busha and begam as well, and those are not included in the 50 shkolim payment. Rav Omar, which we also had before, Omar Kro, Vinoson Aish, Hashoich of Ima, Lavi and Naira. It could have just said, Vinoson Lavi and Naira. We know who the perpetrator is. We're in context. We're talking about Amaanos. But yet the Torah sees the need to repeat at the time of the payment, Hashoich of Ima, Lavi and Naira, Hamishim Kosov. So we learn that it's Hanos Shriva Nun. The $50 that he's paying. Is just for the no of the shiva, but it doesn't include any of the other liabilities in the cloud, the Ika, voice you become. So that takes care of our first um, piece of information that we're seeking. How do you know that in addition to the 50, there's also the additional payments of Nezek and of, and of Voices? We know it from these two psukim, either according to Rova or according to Abaye, from Tachas Hashaina or Hashoichavim. Now the Gemara acts, the Ema Ladida. How do you know? That the kanas is given, the kanas we know is given to the father, as Rashi says. The Torah specifies very clearly the kanas goes to the father. But the payment of Bojas and Pagan um, and, and Tsar by the by the Ma'anis, why Elahani Maybe she should get it. Why should the father get it? On Makra, the Pasuk says in the parsha of Nidorim. Rashi says, So what is Nadorim? The fact that the father could be made for his daughter's Nadorim, what does that have anything to do with him getting money? When we use up to Rashi, when a girl is in the age of Nairus, everything is, all of her affairs are controlled and managed by Beisavio. Any, anything that she produces, any benefit that she generates, goes to her father. Frank the Gemara, if you're going to learn from the Dorim to these types of halachas of momentous, that it goes to her father, I have a problem. Rav was looking for a bekar minayin shemaisa baslavia. How do we know that if a girl works and has a job and she earns money, how do you know that the father is entitled to that money? Shenemar, so he brought a raya from a pasuk. It says in the pasuk, a person has the right to sell his daughter for an oma. But it uses the word together, Rashi says, so we look at the rights that a father has in his daughter, similar to the rights that he has to sell her as an oma. Ma oma, my siya just like an Amma, if he sells her to somebody, her Adon is entitled to all of what her hands produce. Afbas, so to a daughter, Lagabi, her father, Maisia de la Via. So Rav Huna Marav, in order to illustrate, in order to find him a car that a father has rights to the Maisia dime of his daughter, needed to bring a special person. According to you, everything can be learned from the Dharm. Lama Li, why do I need a special person? Typically, Mubin Ureabe Savia. The same person you're using to tell us that the bushes and the pagam go to her father, why wouldn't that person tell you as well that her maisi yadayim go to her father? Ella, what are you forced to say? Ahiba forest adorm udichsuf. The person of Benurea Beisavia is referring to a forest adorm. And you can't bring a raya from there to Mominus that the maisi yadayim of a woman go to her father. And if you want to suggest, well, why can't we learn? Just like a father controls his daughter, the Gabin Adorim, who then he gets her Maishi Adayim, Mamuna Meisur Leofina. You might argue and say, I can't learn it out of Nadorim because Nadorim is Isra Veheter, and this is Mamuna, and you can't learn one from the other. The Chitaimov, and if you want to suggest, Nelof Miknasa, learn it from Knas, it says in our Posuk that the Knas, Venosana Ish, Hashoi Chavim Alavi Anaira, there it's Mephurish, that the Kanas goes to the father. So let's learn the Maisi Yadayim from there. On that I would argue, Mamana mi Kanas You can't learn Mamana from Kanas. Ella, Mistavra, you have to say a Svar. Mistavra, Davia, Hava. 
which is that it belongs to the father. The Iboi, so where we're holding now is, how do we know that the Boishas and the Begam goes to the father and not to her? As far as Ramaisia Dayim, we had a special posse of his Bitei Lama. Knas, our posse says, but first, Lavi and Naira. Nidurim, it says, Benurel. But Boishas and Begam, we have no Makar. How would we know that the father gets it? It's Mestabra that is the father. You know why? The boy He has the right to violate her that same way because he can marry her off to a manuvel and a mukashkin. So since he has the right to be mavazer, obviously he owned that right in her. And therefore, if somebody else is mavazer her, he's entitled to that money. Let's hear actually the manuvel mukashkin. He did not come on. But Abza Koi Bevitoi, the Kidushel, the Kesef, Uvishtar, Ubebia. So he has the right to give her over to a man to be Mekadashur with Bia, no matter who this man is. The Chivan, the Viyoda, Elite, Maman, Le Pogma, Ulavaisha, Bushazu, he has a right to go over to the most ugly, despicable man and say, Give me $10,000 and I will allow you to be Mekadash my daughter with Bia. So you see, he has serious rights. Hashta after they high the pug. So come to Royce, this person who was pugging his daughter was mafsin him because now she's no longer available to be sold to somebody else to to to, to, a, to a marriage that she wouldn't she wouldn't like. He can okay. also argue that uh, Kasher Inu Osa, she's the one that suffered, and yet the father gets the money, right? Asher Inu Osa, right? So that's also a, a riot that... Which Pasuk are you quoting? We just quoted the Pasuk earlier. Oh, uh, tachas, that, right, oh, because she... Tachas Asher Ina. Right. And so that's talking about the Knas. The Knas portion we know goes to the father. It's Xeris HaKosov. This Tachas Asher Ina is not referring but we're to... But we're using the Xeris HaKosov to, to pre- prove other things. As well, I, we are. I mean, if, if they, we can learn more than class, pardon me. The Gemara is saying that from the fact that the father gets the class, we wouldn't be able to prove that he gets the boshus and the pkam. But we're using svaras now, right? That's right. We're using svaras. That's to right. Bring proofs. The gzersak, but we're also using the gzersak. Uh, there's a cussive to bring proof. The fact that he could marry her off to a manubal of That's can a svar. That's a svar. Well, the fact that he can marry her off to a manubal of is, is a fact. We have a but right. We're using that fact to. We're building to a svar out of it. Right. That's right. We're using a svar. It's, it's the fact that he can marry off shows that he owns that. He owns that right. Since he owns that right, so if someone violates it, someone violates the father's right, not the daughter's right. Right. You see, we get something for all the heart, for all the raising the children, the support, we get something for it. Not that we would ever consider exercising that option. Okay. Once again, we learned this Gemara on Chavres. Or is it Chavres? I can't see so well. Any girl that can be sold by her father, meaning a katano, ain't kadas. She doesn't get knas. And if you remember, we had a machloikis if a katana gets knas. I did? Yes, you did. You're right. I, I, I skipped the Gemara. Thank you. Thank you. Pegam. Roy Naisa Ki'ilu Shivchan Mekeris. How do you assess Pegam? You see what her value would be in a, it being sold in the slave market between a Basula and a Baula. Frank Gemara Heiki Shamina Law. How do we make that assessment? Omar Buddha Shmuel. Oimdim, we make the following assessment. To work for him. Why would he care if the shivcha that he's work, that he's hiring to work for him is a basula or baula? There's no difference at all. What is he what is he intend to use the shivcha for in addition to her work? He intends to, to mate her with one of his avadim so that they can create more avadim. Once again, does he care if she's a basula or a baula? To, to the avadim, she's just a baby-making factory. 
if that's the case, once again, the other my nafkalamina. So again, why is there a value to the other to give his uh, Eved a, a shivka who's a basula or a bula? It's not a regular Evid. It's an Evid who's done good work. So he told him, this year for your bonus, I'm going to buy you a basula. So that Evid, that, that's a good bonus. The Evid will work good a whole year. So it was buy them, to buy him a basula. And that's why there is more value in it because he can use it as a bonus to encourage his abundant to work. You see, even when you have slaves who work for you, you still have to uh, treat them well if you want to increase the productivity. That's quite a Christmas bonus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you someone to stand under the mistletoe with. <laughs> I wonder how she'll feel about it. So we learned from Achleikis, Rameir, and the Chachamim, if a Ketana gets Knas, or only if she's a Naira. So the first time of our Mishnah says, As long as a father has a right to sell his daughter, meaning she's a Ketano, there will be no Chi of Knas if she's violated by a third party. The Chamokim she is Knas. But once she becomes a Naira, and if she's violated, there's Knas, Ein Mecher, at that point the father cannot sell her anymore. So the father could never have the right to sell and to the Knas of the same woman. Because when there's a Chi of Knas that he gets, she has to already be a naira, and he can only sell a daughter up until the point that she becomes a that she becomes a naira. So therefore, ktano yesh lo mecher the ein lo A ktano a father's right to sell, but if she's violated, there's no din knas. And naira yesh lo knas ve'in lo mecher. A boigris once she's completely matured, then ein lo loy mecher ve'lo knas. Her if she's violated, there's no din knas, and the father has no right to sell. This Tana is Reb Meir, which incidentally is consistent with the first Tana, with the first, with the Tana of the first mission in our parak, where it says Elunairis Shiyeshlam Knas. So the very first mission in our parak says only Naira gets Knas, which is which is consistent with this mission as well that says Knas only starts by a Naira. There are other Tanaim who argue. And they say, Yesh lo knas mecher. She gets knas when she gets mecher. The Tanya we learned, Ketana mi basio mechot. A Ketana from the moment she's born, the Achetavi stay Cyrus until she becomes a Naira. Yesh lo mecher. She gets mecher, the ain lo knas, and she doesn't get knas. We should Tavi stay Cyrus. Once she becomes a Naira, Acheti bugger until she's fully matured. And we learned yesterday that's about six months. Yesh lo knas, ve'in lo mecher. There's knas and no mecher, diver of mayor, which is which is consistent with the mission we just learned, as well as the first mission in our pair. So your mayor Eimer, Chamokim Sheish Mecher and Knas, the Chamokim Sheish Knas and Mecher. But the Chachamim Eimerim, Ketana, Mimas Gimel, Mimas Gimel Shonu Vir Mechod, Ektana, once she's three years old. Vachati Bogger, Yesh La Knas. If you notice, the mecher earlier we said starts when she was one day old. Even if you hold, you get knas as a ketana, it's only once she's royal lebiya, once she's already three years old. So ketana, once she's three years old already, so it's much from the chachamim that it's only knas. Knas in mecher loy. Are you suggesting chachamim that she gets knas, but the father does not have a right to sell a daughter who's a ketana? That cannot be. The Torah tells us for sure that a father can tell his daughter. Amo, let's clarify the chachamim when the Chacham said that once she's three years old, she gets knas, it means she gets knas as well. The father gets her knas as well, in addition to the rights to sell it. Omar Chista, my time is Rabmeir. What is the slur of Rabmeir who holds who holds that a Ktana doesn't get knas? Zokt, the Gemara, Omar Kreta Pasuk says, Veloy seal Isha. And by a woman who is either who is taken advantage of, it says, Well, I see Alicia, she has to become his wife. It needs to be a girl who would have been old enough to have been able to marry herself off. Rashi says, But me, she yesh biyoda, li kanis atma li ishus, akasa vadaver. The Torah in the parish of Knas is speaking about a woman who's old enough to have been able to be Makabal Kidian. 
That doesn't happen until she becomes 12, until she becomes an Ira. And from there, Mayor understands that the whole part of Knas only applies to a girl who's an adult. Rabbanan Amar, Rishlakish, Rabban said him Rishlakish, Amar Kra, Naira. It says Naira with, with, out a hay. I believe that the word Naira in the Pasuk is written with out a hay to tell you, Afiluk Kana Bamashma. Not a full Naira, even a Naira without a hay, who we still consider a Kana. Rashi says, Hamas means a lot of Rishlak, that's that fighter. But Rishlakish said that it says Naira without a hay means a Kana. So Zok to Gemara, Shomer a papa berater of Hanan, me bek Lucas. Rav Papa, the son of Rav Hanan from Bek Lucas, heard this Chiddush of Rishlokish, who said that Naira without a hay also means a Kana. And Ozul Omer a Kamejer of Simi Barashi. He shared this with Absimi Barashi. Omer Lane, Absimi Barashi told him, Atun, a homas nusula, you use Rishlokish's Rishlokish's aloha, that Naira without a hay includes a Kana. And you use it to teach you that there's knas even for iktana. I know a homas I use rishlokish's aloha, but I applied it to a completely different sugya. Raji the homas nisula, but how do rishlokish? The amr kamokam shenichlev nair or naira. Below he every time the word naira is written without a hey at the end, the karina naira. But we read it naira, we pronounce it naira. Lelamid alaktanavo. It's teaching you that the pastor is talking about Akana. I use it for the following Allah. Omer is Lakish. Hamoiti Shemar al Akana. The Allah is if someone marries a woman and falsely accuses her of being a Ba'ula, he has to pay a Kanas. What if this woman is a Kana? Potter, there is no Din Kanas. So the Rashi says, the Ba'anchu Oisa may a Kesef, but not nu la via Naira. The word, normally, if someone is Moiti Shemar on a woman, he gives the father a hundred more kesef, but not on a katana. Why? It says he should give it to Ravi Naira, and there Naira is written with a hay. So since Naira is written with a hay, Naira Malay, Libra Akhosu. So therefore, only if she's an adult, not if she's a katana. Mask of Laura are you telling me that the only way we know? That a katana doesn't get the knas of Mochi Shemra is because the word naira is written with a hay. But if the word naira there was not written with a hay, are you claiming that in fact we would be Mikhaiva Knas even for a katana? That's impossible. Time of the cause of Rahman and Naira, Halava Kihava Amina Fidu Ktana, it's impossible. But if, if you read the context of the Pasuk, it says, What if it was not Mochi Shemra? What if the accusation made by the husband was in fact true? The Emes Hoyadover and Lenim to Basulum Naira, you know what they do? For it see you as a Naira, Al Pesach Beis Avia, Uskalua. They kill her. Ukatana Lava Sanchini. So the Pesach obviously is only referring to an adult. Because if it was referring to Akhtana, she would not be Mukhiyev Skila if in fact she did violate. So Oibazo, you cannot say that Rishlokish is Halacha of Hanaira with a hay. Tells you that it's referring to an adult is the reason why we say that a katana doesn't get knas because we know it anyway from the context of the post. Rather, what you have to say is from Moichi Shemra, that's where Rish Lakish picked up this rule from. By Moichi Shemra, it says Nair with a hay. And there we know through the context of the post that it's speaking of a gedoyla. So Rish Lakish figured, oh, when Nair is written with a hay, it means an actual gedoyla. But if Nair was written without a hay, maybe then it even includes a katana. Alakan Naira. Here it says Naira with a hay, and we know independently that it must be speaking about a doyla. Naira without a hay, a filuk tanabemashma. So in fact, the words of Rishlokish are only being used to explain our Mishnah as to why a katana does, does get knas, because it says Naira without a hay. Um, and he knows that from the case of Motishan. Beautiful. We have a couple of more minutes, so we might as well learn the next Mishnah. Zok the head of the Mishnah on Mem Aleph. Wow, what, how good it feels to be ahead. Zok the head of the Mishnah. Ha'aymer patisi esbita yishal plagi. Someone came along and said, I'm guilty. I was mefata, someone's daughter. The Allah is, mishalom boishish upikam al piyatsma. Boishish upikam, which are momon, you pay, because if you admit that you owe someone money, 
you have to pay them. But the Ain Mishalom Knas. But Knas he doesn't pay because we have Halacha Moid the Knas Potter. And Rashi says, where do we know it from? We know it from the case of Kapo. It says, Measher Yarshion Elohim. When Bezdin is Mechai of somebody, that's when he pays a Knas, such as Kapo. Prat Lamashe is Atmoi, if he incriminated himself, he has no Chiv Knas. But Maman, of course, if he admits that he owes somebody money, of course he has to pay. What about Ha'omer Ganafi? Someone comes along and tells uh, a person, I stole from you. So Mashalom is a Karen. He has to pay back whatever he stole off the Atzimut. Then Mashalom the Shlomi Kepo, what the Shlomi Abar Bechamisha. But the Knossos, that compound on the actual Karen, he doesn't pay because of the same Svar we had that Prat the Mashir says. How about Hamish Shari is Ploini? If he admits that my ox killed somebody or killed somebody's ox, is that Kanas or is that Mammon? He has to pay even though he admitted it, because that's once again a Chiv of Mammon. But what about Hamish Shari? What if I say my ox killed someone's servant? Remember, we just said that there's a flat rate of Shloishim. So that's a Kanas. That he would not pay if he admitted it. Because that's called knas. How do we know what's knas and what's moment? Zaklal. Call a mashalom yeser al mashahizik. Ain't a mashalom al piatzmoi. Whenever there's a chiv to pay more than the assessed damages, that's considered knas. And since that's considered knas, he's not going to pay based on his own admission because moid of a knas potter because of a shayashin alim. Let's talk to the head of the Gemara. The listening onasti. Why is the Mishnah only speaking about somebody who's admitting to have made Peter that he pays the Mormonists? How about if he says, I violated a woman? Why doesn't our Mishnah say there as well that he has to pay the Tsar, the Boshes of the God? So before we learn this tomorrow, I want to ask you, if a girl is violated, would the family want anybody to know about it? Of course not, right? So Zak to Gemara, let me boy come. Let me boy a nasty. The loy, the loy kapogam law. It's posher that he said a nasty. Or even if it comes out, even if people find out that she was nanas, it doesn't damage her so much because it wasn't her fault. She's an innocent victim. So there are people, are, are, the girl's image it will not be so tarnished if she was violated because she's still a good girl. She didn't do anything wrong. The Mashal and Boshi should become a Piatmoy, therefore, sure he pays off Piatmoy, Abel Patisi. But in the case where he's saying that I was a fat of this girl, basically what he's saying is, I'm a bum and she's a bum. And who's going to want to marry her? Because she's a girl who allowed herself to be seduced. The Kapogam law, where she's, she'll say, I, I don't want your Pagam. I don't want your Boshis. I want to deny the whole affair. Maybe you don't let him pay up Piatmoy. Because if he pays up Piatmoy, then people are going to say, oh, if Bezdin was Machai to pay, obviously it really happened. Kamash Lomasnisin, the mission tells you that he's still believed to pay, even though they don't want to accept it, even though they want to deny it. That's your Rashi. The, the embarrassment of um, Anusa is not nearly as bad as Mafuta. Since it's not damaging her so much, Mehem Ninale will believe him to be Mechaev himself for all the payments that he's liable for because he was Ma'anasar. Because by believing him, we're also putting a stamp of the Bezdin that this woman did a Naver. Why should this person be believed that everyone should talk to this girl? Was Mazana. So you might think, you might think that there would be no Khiv if they denied Kamash Mullah. So now we're going to have to discuss what was they, what were they saying? Was the girls' family saying we want the money? Or were they saying they don't want the money? So that we'll get into tomorrow, Mrs. Shem. So we'll stop here. Shkoyah.